Okay. Bridge nav. Can we have one zero meters south, please? Thank you. We can't hook it from here. We can't hook it from here. Winch nav. Go ahead. Can you pay out two meters, please? Roger, paying out two meters. Isn't it going to swing toward the boat? Like, once we pick it up? So we don't want Atalanta standing back like that. Two meters paid out. Roger. Yep. Yeah. Winch now. Go ahead, Nav. Can you pay out two meters, please? Roger. Winch now. Go ahead. Can you come up five meters, please? Roger, coming up five meters. Roger. Winch now. Go ahead. Can you come up another five meters really slow? Can you come up another five meters?
Do you want like five meters a minute? I think right now you're missing the hydrophone there still. Winch, Nav. Go ahead, Nav. Can you come all stop, please? Winch, Nav. Go ahead. Can you start coming up 10 meters a minute, please? Roger, coming up 10 meters per minute continuously.
Winch nav. You are clear to surface. Roger. Uh, paying in at 20 meters per minute to the surface. Roger. Well, that was fun. Yeah. Uh, cable, Mabel. You want to look at this thing, or can <laughs> I go get the cable? Well, um, I believe the other frame landed on this one, did it not? No, oh, never even came close. Oh, I did it? No. Oh, I what thought you're it talking, did. Willis. That's why I wrote it up. Did you see that? Okay. Oh, I thought. All right. I'll cool. go look. I'll go look. No. Yeah, I thought. I, okay. No, yeah, that's I, why. I <coughs> That's why I kept a hold of it when we came up. Oh, okay. I thought for some reason I saw them on top of each other for a second, but... No, I never got anywhere near it. You can nice. see where it came out of the mud here and all the debris fell. Yeah, yeah. I thought it swung that way, but okay. Some weights from when you dropped it. <laughs> no, I was holding on to it pretty good. Uh, okay, okay. Sweet. And, and uh, yeah, I kept the happy heading and kept the head. So when we came up, we came up five meters rapidly out of the seabed when it... Yeah, 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 I saw why you continually pay in, okay. That yeah, so good. what happens, they get stuck in the mud, so he was paying up five meters and nothing happened, nothing happened, and all of a sudden, boing, and it, oh, you know, gotcha. it yeah, yeah. comes out of the mud. And it. I had five meters altitude instantly. Yeah, okay. And Well, not instantly, but pretty rapidly, and then uh, we came up another five after that, so we did all of our... Uh, moving around at 10 meters before I let go of it. All right, so no, it's perfect. Yeah, I was just well above it. Confused too many hydrophones on one thing. Sweet. Yeah, we can when whenever you're happy, we can uh, plug this thing in. I do that. Oh, I'm good. Are you kidding? This stuff is... This is the juice here. Almost, almost like construction, but with a science, delicate science ROV. <laughs> Those construction ROVs are a little more bulletproof. Yeah, they don't have all the jewelry hanging out like this one does. You know, Niskin's on side, Brow sonar. core tubes on the other side, jewelry in the front. You can rub a wire all the way around them, can and do. Uh, rub them, you know, and get up close and friendly with stuff. If you look at one of the Schilling UHDs, they're all slicked up. They got... Armor. Yeah, they basically <laughs> got armor nowadays. They use a uh, 1-inch UHMW. Can you come down a bit for yeah, me? Yeah, come down. 1H UH, UHMW sheet all the way around, so you can't get, it's harder to get a wire or a hook inside the vehicle, but you can still work on that thing. And science ROVs usually don't work around wires and moorings and stuff, so we can get away with having our goodies hanging out until we can't there's a term we actually say slicked up for intervention so we, if we do huh. have stuff hanging out we take it off or tuck it away you want to do a on the fly grab here of sure. the, I don't have to get all muddy I'll put it right in front of you Okay, I'm dipping my uh, hose there. Instagram. All right. 
right, you can fletch it up if you can. Might have to do a smear. Lights off. Can I hold on to it? Be great. You want the light back? You good? Good. Dirk Systems is asking for a rough estimate when connection is happening, 5 minutes, 20 minutes. Probably 20 minutes, half hour. 20 minutes, I'd say 10, to, 10 minutes to half an hour. Hmm. Thank you. Multiply by pi, add 20%. Hopefully before 2 hours. <laughs> Up a bit there, Jake. Coming up. spot for the new one, did we? It's here somewhere? Just north of the old one, I, I guess? I assume it's along your yeah. snail trail, but... It's up here. Yeah. Ah, right, yeah, snail trail. Thank you. There it is. Yep. Yeah, you can't, we can't recover the yellow or the moorings till tomorrow morning. We already did that. I think so, yeah. Yeah, I think they already did all that. You want to get ready to grab on this thing somewhere? It's a good thing though, right? <laughs> How long are each of those? Oh, you're happy, huh? All that, all that science. Yeah. I would say till about four in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Probably do vertical ones too if you want. Yeah. Probably do vertical too. If yep, you wanted. Absolutely. 
Ja. We can grab the left post on this one, like we did last time, I right? believe so, yeah. From our quick quick look in advance, yeah, you should be able to. The cable seems to go along that far back one. And there's only one cable to the top, so. Swing and a miss. <laughs> okay. You can uh, bring the ROV down a little if you want. Whatever you want to do. You're driving now and it's holding heavy. Uh, other way, elbow up or shoulder up. <laughs> Too far there. Here, I'll play with it. Too far. Yeah. I'm looking right down, right? Uh, you wanted to dust cap first, dude. Oh. <laughs> oh. Practice plug complete. You're welcome. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Do you think it's gonna fall off of there? Probably get to see it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, we'll plug it back in there. Yeah. yeah. Cycle your freeze a few times so you let go of there. Oh, you can't. There, you gotta watch that hydraulic line with your basket and bucket and stuff. Yeah, I porched out a little. Uh. I find it really difficult to make these at a 45 degree angle. Really, I like doing it at 45 degrees. Uh, I better Fletcher back in. Which ones are 45 or are you just saying? i am always done them at 90 because the arm oh. does this. Right When you do this, you got all this well, business. If you go this way, the 
Our farm. stuff's so it's low like, down, that's a problem. Like, if the other way, Jack, just behind you. Yeah. I see what you're saying, though. Like, if they were dead in front of you, plugging in 90 is easier. Yeah. yeah. This one. In front of you and higher, yeah. Yeah. I guess that's the difference of the... You're used to big stuff. Yeah, where meter's up. Where you're grabbing and making connections and stuff, eh? Yeah. You're not even landing ever. No. I'm not allowed to touch the mud. You don't have a load cell on your winch on the deck, right? It does. We do. It's just, right. um, uh, it's kind of glitchy, but it does give you an active difference in weight. I think that's in. And I quite see a click there. But Take a quick picture here. Let's see. I think your jaw is on the back of it. You'll have to let go and give it the love tap. Get that final little bit there. So I saw him disappear oh, out of the... Oh, you just saw him, right? Yeah. Okay. Nice. Final click, final push there. Is it possible Fletcher to swing the, the RV a bit around to get them a straight heading to the connector? Yeah, sure. Let's just put this guy in the box here. Sure. And I'll uh, retract my toys off the front so we don't touch the hydrophones. Traction. Look at that nice. <laughs> That's the first time I've used that touch screen in years. <laughs> the birthday boy. Thank you. Uh, not quite lined up there. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> Two seven four. Thank you. Did you get some number? West ish. Yeah, two. Really close to west. En four six eight. Multiplied One. by top pi. <laughs> If you needed that serial number. What's that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Bubble's a heck of a camera. Say what you want about Bubble, but it's a great camera. It is a good camera. It's just not wide enough for my taste. That's what Pilot Cam's for. 277. 
276. Okay, and let go. All right, letting go. Yeah. Okay, thank you. you I'm just going to quickly open? read oh. out the coordinates for the new hydrophonic array. Open now. That is latitude 47 decimal 75711416, longitude negative. One two seven decimal seven three one 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 zero two seven. Is that for sure? Um. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Watch change of video. Roger. Thanks, Jacob. Thanks, Jacob. Yep. Okay, Danny. You're up. Videos on comms. Loud and clear. Yep. Four by three and a half. What are we doing, Dan? Maybe. Dan, no can idea. we get a survey of this? Uh, just, I just want to check out the elements um, or the socks. Right. It's a quick visual. I put all my toys away so I don't do any sock smacking. Gauge check, Danny. It's yep, time. I can do a gauge check. Just tucking the uh, lightning fast magnum in here. Be right, careful. It's too too fast. I would think that would be standard procedure to watch your tension while you're winching up, but <laughs> that's just me. <laughs> 20. 20 to 80. I oh, don't know. Yeah, don't worry about it. We're good. Don't bubble. They wouldn't catch it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they would see the angle of the wire going funky if it's you know, riding up the 6.8. Yeah. Your, your wire is going to part long before ours does. So. <laughs> yeah, I forget that. I'll probably get the hydrophone back anyways, because it would come land on top of Atalanta. <laughs> 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 Might be messy, but you'd probably get it back. Everything looks good, Dan. Roger. Will they turn it on while we're here, or they'll wait till we? Oh, uh, they're gonna. They're just. I think they might the just check comms and power, but they're not gonna turn it on. Right. Um, it's powered yeah, on. Can you imagine how loud that would be? Yeah, they won't actually turn the driver. They won't be checking the data but they'll turn the instruments just to see if everything's working.
So I guess the question is, after this, we have, um, we can go and, if we can move the ship, which it's either yay or nay, um, we can do some oily work and make some stage and oily for later recovery, but that would require a ship, like, uh, that spot is 125 meters from here. Uh, to the north? To the southwest. Negatory, Ghost Rider. Okay. That wire is still 10 meters away from... Yeah, no, no, I, I assumed as much. So as far as that, I think we're back to benthic surveys here, just poking around, sightseeing. Ooh. While the wire comes up. Just yes. in time for me to join you again. This time you'll have Bobby. How did you do yes. that? <laughs> he knows. <laughs> All right, well, thanks. Okay, that's uh, 180 both ways there. Still looks uh, fine to me. Looking good. So just starting watch, did we talk about what this is? Do we have, is this a good time? Sure. Right on. Got two hours. <laughs> to talk about Excellent. <laughs> what this instrument is. <laughs> well, we, won't, we won't take that long. Yeah, we got to wait. This is a hydrophone array. Right on. So you see there's four elements there in orange. Those are hydrophones positioned at, at different uh, heights and heights above the seabed. And this is to be able to uh, have the rationality of the sound, uh, the sounds reaching the platform. And so you're listening to marine mammals, fish, the, the soundscape as a whole, but you want to also know exactly where the sounds are coming from. And if you have a single element either phone, you, you can't tell exactly where uh, the sound's coming from. So one thing we were chatting about was just the fact that these hydrophone files, the, the data that comes in from the hydrophone is, um, makes really large files. And um, uh, Jacob was wondering, like, what kind of size are we looking at? And I, I couldn't answer that question. I sent a message out to Jeanette, but... Uh, yeah, Franco is, is listening to us. I mean, I, I deal with video files most of the time, right? right. Um, they are, um, I assume, as large, like the spectrograms and the audio files can be... It depends. It depends how long are you recording, if yeah. you're constantly recording, or if you are in a, I don't know, uh, the recording settings for this particular instrument. Um, if it's continuously recording, so we break down the files into manageable pieces, uh, file sizes. Um, I'm going to give a blunt guess here. Okay, <laughs> let's I'll, do it. I'll say between 50 to 50 megabytes to a couple hundred megabytes. Yeah, it depends. Wait a second. Again, I'm based this on, 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 
on the video files that are pretty large files. Why is it not <laughs> um, working? But sometimes it locks itself. Pull your thing online. down. Right it's on. the same one. Oh yeah. For a five-minute file, you would have about 230 oh, megabytes, working. so I was not too far off. And of course, for a, uh, for the top hydrophone that we are usually sampling 256 kilobytes per second. Is that right. correct, Len Franco? And that's just one hydrophone yeah. within the array of four. Exactly. So we're talking about a gigabyte per five minutes. Wow. For the for for the element. Okay. Thanks, Lan Franco. Kilo, kilo samples per second. Okay, so that's still a hefty uh, chunk of data. Yeah, so that uh, highlights the importance of using machine learning, for example, for automatically detecting. Uh, signals on this, all the spectrograms and, and audio files. We have a cool project going on in Barclay Canyon uh, where we're trying to um, identify fish sounds. We're gonna go later on uh, in a few days time hopefully to recover our fish acoustics experiment where we have a couple cameras, an acoustic camera which is a sonar, high frequency sonar and a uh, video camera uh, pointed to this, um, uh, it's like a bait release system. Mm -hmm. So we have attraction of fish and scavengers in the field of view, and we have a target species that we are suspecting. Well, we have evidence that the species are sable fish. Yep. They are vocalizing, the this, this species use sounds to communicate interspecifically, interspecifically. And, uh, so between sablefish and other types of fish? No, no, no. No, intra, just within intra, the sablefish? Yeah, intra okay. specifically. And within the species. And so we, ha we have some evidence that they are vocalizing in the wild, but they're so, their frequency of vocalization are so similar to their low band, low frequency. Um, vocalizations are similar to sounds made by dolphins and other marine mammals, so it's pretty hard to disentangle that signal from the spectrograms. So we are relying on machine learning to, to be able to, to tease that apart. So do we, we are investigating that? Because yeah, we, we, we don't have... Um we don't have a machine learning. We're working on it. Yeah, getting it set up. Yeah. yeah. But we have, if I'm not wrong, captured from those hydrophones, um, I think uh, 13, if not more, species of marine mammals in Barclay Canyon. Right on, and um, if folks want to take a look at some of the sounds we've recorded, and I say take a look, I literally mean that. Spectrogram shows uh, the picture of the sound. Um, you can also hear it, but you can do that on our YouTube channel. Hmm. You can get the data itself right from our uh, Oceans 3.0, accessible on oceannetworks.ca the Oceans 3.0 data portal, or we have it handily curated for you on our YouTube channel and also on SoundCloud. So on our YouTube channel, um, just click Playlists and Sounds of the Deep, and you'll find some pretty impressive uh, sounds there. Glad you mentioned that. I just realized I was not subscribed to your channel on YouTube. Ed. That has been rectified. Thank you. Yeah.
That's a snail fish. Another cool thing about uh, our hydrophone hydrophones, because we have have them in multiple sites, is that we have a recording for all three ecotypes of killer whales. So that includes the offshore, the transient or bigs, as well as the residents. What was the second class? Transient. Transients or bigs. Ah. Mm, so bigs named after the scientist. I don't know what his first name was. And um, Doctor. <laughs> Doctor Biggs. <laughs> and then, uh, but yeah, sometimes um, you'll, uh, re people refer to them as transient. And they're solos, type. they live by themselves, not in a pod. Yeah. <laughs> uh, our mate, uh, Paul, saw one, uh, I think, before we even got into the street. Oh. Yeah. Oh, like on this expedition? Uh, on the transit here from Honolulu. Right. Yeah. Right on. In which each day we were progressively wearing heavier and heavier clothes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And every other day we changed our clocks an hour. As we went through a time oh, zone, oh, time yeah, zone, yeah, time yeah. zone. Yeah. I think in hindsight, just doing three hours right out of the gate would have been a little easier. but. You know. I don't know. Can somebody get boat lag? <laughs> Just it's interesting. I don't know. Tell us, and, Ed. And can, we, can you get boat lag? Well, it got a little tiring to lose an hour of sleep every other night. Yeah. So I think that's legit. Yeah. I have boat lag. Boat lag. We do have the opposite of seasickness called dock rock. Yeah. Where people who, like myself, who don't know... Uh, real effect from being at sea. Why am I turned up so loud? Um, when we get ashore, uh, feel unsteady. Yes, and unfortunately I've been told that people who get seasick are more likely to get dock rock. Oh really? I didn't know that. I don't know, that's what I, someone told me. I think people who do get seasick, it happens like every time they leave port. So if you're out here for 45 days, we go into port for a day and then we leave. It happens, I think, again. I don't. Maybe it's an individual experience. I don't know. I don't know. I'm about I'm to just modify my bed at home to just on uh, like actuators, so it just. Oh, just, just so, so it feels like I know because you sleep so well at sea. <laughs> it That's feels like sure. you're, yeah, definitely feels like you're being um, rocked in a hammock. Yeah. I like I do. I do like that. In really heavy seas, it feels like. Uh, some massive force is just gently lifting you up from the bed and then pushing you down into it. And that cycle repeats. And even just saying it by like the third time, I'm asleep. It's so <laughs> relaxing. Just that, this big lifting. It's always fun when, then, uh, when your feet go above your head. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, really grateful that uh, we haven't had quite that experience. Well, yeah, no, it's been nice weather we've had out here. Oh, this has been great. Yeah. Those weather days that we had were not weather days. They were weather days for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I I was quite confident they weren't the real weather days, but you know. We got we got Lanfranco Musi online, our acoustician uh, senior scientist with ONC. Awesome. He chimed in on our dis earlier discussion about the purpose of this hydrophone array and he's saying that we are still perfecting our array processing algorithms but an interesting application of this particular array would be source tracking uh, being able to follow a source in 3d space uh, example a marine mammal uh, in principle we will allow you to figure out how many mammals are in the area Oh. And of course, their look at the exact location and directionality of their 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 sounds. No, uh, Fabio. Excuse me if this has already been discussed because I'm just joining this uh, shift. 
is that being done through an array of these instruments or because this one has four different sensors on it it can acoustically locate by well, the delay in sound it is because of their different positions right so right. there is a, a, a three-dimensionality on their uh, relative positions so that allows the source to be uh, geometrically you know you can figure out the exact source uh, the direction of the sound coming from and without getting super technical I would assume that this is all running on some sort of PTP or precision time protocol because you're working in milliseconds or sub milliseconds um, difference between sounds arriving yeah there they have to be synchronized at the very yeah. Fine, uh, Adam, yeah. Adam. Speed of God. As fast as you can. He says microsecond or better. Okay. Well. So they must have a really nice time source or time seed that they're using. If if I had to go out on a limb and guess just off the top of my head, I'm going to say it's manufactured by a company in Germany called Meinberg. What? The, their time seed of what they're using, the track uh, timing. But there's probably scientific instruments that have safe real... Uh, yeah. Uh, you would think, you, uh, you probably never think about it, but trying to Synchronize things to time is a complex problem. It really it is. is. Well, for the fish acoustics experiment, for example, where we have we have at least four devices that had to be synchronized. Uh, we are we have a video image, we have right. an acou acoustic image from the sonar, uh, because we're also. Uh, looking at the role of artificial lights. So when we turn the lights off and we see the behavior of the fish, it changes. And then we turn the lights on again. And, and then we have the hydrophone. So we have to synchronize all those instruments yeah. and to see where the, fish are, where the fish is occurring in the video and where the sound is coming from. And if your video sources are using standardized uh, protocols, uh, you're limited to up to only about 60 frames per second. So one sixtieth of a second, not yeah. microseconds. There are very specialized cameras that do super high speed work, but I'm not familiar with any of them ever being used for subsea work. Nothing moves fast in the bottom of the ocean. Yeah, the camera I'm thinking of off the top of my head is called a Viper, but I don't know who makes it. And it's a lot of frames per second. I think it's called a Viper. So on the, the note of species and sounds, um, we got over 1,000 fish that are known to uh, make sound. We've got marine mammals. We've got all sorts of other sounds in the sea from anthropogenic or human-made things. We've got earthquakes make sounds, land, underwater landslides make sounds. What other things? Biotic things do we know make sound? Oh, I think corals make sounds. Um, the okay. coral, as the coral reefs, uh, there's there's been a lot of research recently. Yeah. On the soundscape of coral reef systems, and and then it's a, a symphony of animals producing sound. We have shrimps and many fish, um, and yeah, they are using that as a additional alternative tool for monitoring those systems if they're healthy depending on the soundscape but yeah I, I, top of my head here being a benthic ecologist I uh, see floor focus on seafloor uh, biodiversity I know a lot of invertebrates make sound when you know, right um, 
and of course a lot of uh, shallow water fish as well. But I, other than fish, marine mammals, yeah. humans, yeah. Yeah. landslide, <laughs> earthquakes, ROVs. Yeah, ROVs. I yeah. don't know. Bubbles. Bubbles the, make sound. Maybe the what's the name of that sea monster? The kraken. kraken? The oh. kraken. Oh, yeah. Ed. The kraken. You mind melded me. Uh, Seattle's hockey team. I know. Um, but it's based on the sea monster, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You got it. So just to correct myself, the Viper was an early high-speed camera. The current ones that I'm familiar with are made by a company called Phantom. Oh, we forgot to mention the hydrothermal vents. Do you have also make hydrophones sounds. up there? Oh, yeah, that's yeah, right. We, we do. We deploy the short the hydrophone at the beginning All of this right. expedition from colleagues, uh, collaboration with colleagues at Dalhousie University. And those were to to listen to the sounds of the ridge, the Juan de Fuca ridge and the cracklings and, and the sounds made by the all the hydrothermal activity and events, among other things. Right on. So in the last few minutes, we've just had uh, a few new visitors joining us from Australia, the United States and Canada um, to join the complement of other folks from Germany and the United Kingdom. So thanks for joining us. Uh, this is Nautilus Expedition 151. We are doing maintenance on Ocean Network Canada's infrastructure on the seafloor. It's part of our Neptune Observatory. And yeah, you can follow along just as you are by joining us. You can also check out oceanarics.ca. We are discussing the hydrophone, which is the instrument that you see on satellite feed one there. This is actually a hydrophone array. One, actually, one thing we haven't mentioned is the fact that, um, or maybe it was on the previous shift, but uh, there's a neat little cap on um, each of the instruments to prevent biofouling. So this is one of the things that we constantly battle with when instruments are deployed uh, for multiple years, for for long periods of time. All sorts of, of little organisms like to make their home on the instruments. So this uh, kind of yellow sock um, prevents, uh, I, I suppose, planktons and other critters from their larval stages from uh, landing on the instrument and, and uh, causing degradation of the data and such. We've got some other cool tools to prevent biofouling, I believe. Um, so the sleeves on the hydrophone. I think, did I hear, we also we use uh, UV light somewhere? Yeah, where, where do we have that? Ulrike, do you chime one, in? One and only instrument that comes to my mind are a certain type of CTD, so okay. conductivity, temperature, and depth sons. Um, there are different types and mates of CTDs, and not all of them have an integrated UV light, but I know at least of one type who does have them. And as far as I know, it's relatively successful and at least um, decreasing biofouling can't prevent it completely, but um, it's helping to decrease it and keep it low. Awesome, thank and you. Where, do you know where we have those installed? A like Folger oh. or? No, you got me. Probably a Folger. Uh, I would uh, have to look, look it up. with UV anti-fouling. Yeah, I remember that. AML. AML, yeah. yeah. So AML is the one that is the UV for CTDs for yeah. uh, anything that's I'm sure there's cool. a talent, but AML basically. So yeah, AML CTDs at Folger, for example. Thank you. In addition to our 
uh, deep sea infrastructure here on the Neptune network, we have a number of observatories in collaboration with coastal communities. And uh, on the topic of biofouling, <laughs> the you can you can check it out and see it for yourself um, from on our website oceannetworks.ca. But um, the Campbell River Community Observatory is a favorite place for the sea urchins. Uh, lately, they've been hanging out right on top of the camera all the time. So <laughs> maybe that'll be one of the next things that we consider how we can how we can politely ask the sea urchins not to make their home right on top of the camera lens. <laughs> well, not the lens, but the housing. So if you've got ideas out there, Well, while we just circle this thing, I'll put uh, our thrilling uh, deck crew and the banana crane on set feed three. No wagering. So much stuff on the deck. Every time we demobilize in Sydney or Victoria and everything gets loaded on the flatbeds, it feels like we could play tennis on the back deck here. Yeah. <laughs> or at least pickleball. <laughs> pickleball. Is that not a thing up here? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I never played it myself, but uh, I have heard of it. So this expedition is 24 days long. We are currently, our status is no more Thursdays. Yeah. And no more Wednesdays. And we have one more actual Tuesday. Yeah. One more Sunday, Sunday. We had a birthday today. Yeah. Bernardo I was going to call it out when, when he was listening, though. Oh, yeah. Well, we can call it out every hour on the hour. <laughs> every half hour. Every half hour. <sighs> so we are currently just uh, waiting. Yeah, we've got two wires in the water right now, one for the ROV, one recovering the hydrophone. So we want that to be clear from water before we start moving the vessel around. Sorry, yeah. water reverted. On the side of safety is the good side to be on.
what I'm seeing in, uh, in, al in also one of the cameras. A lot of cloud cover, which is a little unfortunate. We're supposed to yeah. be expecting a solar storm tonight. So it was going to be a good night to see the Aurora Borealis, but I think we're skunkered on that. And surprisingly, it is just a little colder here right now than it is for our viewers, well, if they're in New South Wales, in Australia. It's like 16 there or something. Oh. Um, and then didn't you say Germany as well? I know in Frankfurt it was like 31 the other day or something. I think 27 today. Wow. Not like people are tuning in here for global weather, but it's been quite warm in a lot of places. Uh, I have only ever been in New South Wales in July, which is very much where I live in Seattle most <laughs> of the year. <laughs> uh, was that timed on purpose? <laughs> no, it's work. It's oh, work. okay. Yeah. Loved it. Loved working there. So I think we got a interesting lecture here. Yeah. Rennie is imparting his knowledge to the that pilots. It could take years because he knows so much. Yeah. I think last night he was saying he celebrated his birthday on this vessel as well, 10 years ago. That's right. Yeah. I enjoyed the cake they made for him. <laughs> <laughs> for us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And hopefully he'll get a nice gluten-free cake when he gets home. A delicious oh. one. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Happy birthday. Here's something you can't eat. Well, it's hard to make those at sea. Yeah, that's true. And there's not like the, I mean, gluten-free is a yeah. difficult thing to make, so... Always try and be conscious of people's dietary concerns. I'm impressed with all the options. Wow, I counted the other day. There was like 18 different trays out or something. Yeah. It's just... Yeah, so life aboard. Why don't we talk about that, Ed? Ooh. It's, I, you know, I've, I've tried to spend, like when we bring an intern out, it's her very first time coming to see. Yeah. And I previously had spent a lot of time and energy in trying to tell them exactly what to expect. Yeah. And I've learned that you cannot effectively communicate what this is like. Yeah. <laughs> it's a new experience and it's an adventure and you just got to jump in with both feet. Right on. There's some things you can tell them, like, you know, bring shower shoes yeah. or, you know. You can do laundry be, be aboard. Be prepared to dress warmly in the van. Right. Um, and interestingly, as we go to warmer and warmer climates, we tend to keep it a little more on the cooler side here. Gives us a little safety factor. Jake, how many times have you been out? This is my 10th expedition. Oh, wow. Yeah. Been four years now been going out. Right on. I started as an intern. Wasn't your internship? Yeah, Jake, on the didn't you say 10? Yeah, yeah, 10. 10. Nice, man. Did, were you on the leg from Samoa to Honolulu? Honolulu to Samoa. What the one before was on that. Oh, that one yeah. was um, Jarvis and Kingman yeah, and Palmyra. Palmyra. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, was that your first one? That was my first one. I remember. Yeah. Remember that? Way out there. I was immediately hooked. Well, that's good. Yeah. And that was the internship. That was the internship. Yep. Very cool. How did you get selected to, like, what did you have to do to prepare for the internship? Um, there's a whole application process, but you have to write, like, a cover letter, submit a resume, and get a couple recommendations. And so I Hello. just finished my undergrad, and I, um, well, actually, I, I applied during my senior year. Oh, wait, sure. Um, my undergrad. It probably would be best to do relative to the new hydrophone placement, which is. Uh, I'll just, I'll, yeah, yeah, five meters, five meters bearing two two five. Oops, I can I can give you a coordinate there too. What 
I just accidentally dropped one though. Yeah. Wait. Yeah, they used to uh, strap all these weights, sure. chuck them over the side, and then we'd go pull the pin, yeah. yeah or the pin, pin. Uh, I can't remember if we... Yeah, so they would go over with floats and a weight. Yeah, that's right. Then we'd go do some Jimmy Jazz. I can't remember the details, but... Uh, something like that, yeah. <laughs> you can see where it sprung out of the seabed when it finally got tension. Well, it was an explosion. <laughs> Dirk, did you see how heavy they are? Cable coiled up on the seabed there. Oh, you're not on uh, SPL back there. Ah, there, there we go. I think this is where we pulled that cable out of the mud. Oh yeah, sorry. I thought it was. Uh, yeah, you are correct. So. There's an egg. Well, it's an interesting octocoral. It's like yeah. split. It's got well, two. What's that one? Did you see that one? It's branch. It has you? two rather Look than. Look at that hydro or something. What is that? Octocoral is what they're called? That's yeah, a, yeah. just a very general Polyps. soft coral. I don't know. Until we get down, I don't know. Anemone? But I've never seen one that's branched two like that, I, I don't know. think. <laughs> At least not very often. What are we doing? Just oh, looking. Serving the cable? No, 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 we're just looking at this oh, thing. Maybe. So, man, it's an octocoral. Are you out of time? Yeah, Fabio, have you seen one that's like that's like two like that? Um, I think it's, I've seen similar, but not quite this. Yeah. Look at the surface of this anemone in Atlanta. <laughs> it's not an anemone. It's a, it's a jelly. Or jellyfish, sorry. <laughs> Looks like it stuck its head out of the window. <laughs> We have those hoses hanging down, so we somehow knocked them off the tie wrap there. They never tie wrapped them on this dive? Uh, I thought they were tie wrapped earlier. I was very confused at Atalanta, but it's because the tilt is back in, right? Tilt's all the way vertical. Yeah, let me come away from the hydrophone here. That um, beacon hydrofoam position up on the wire is looking good. It's quite towards starboard now. Back where you're at. It's funny how it just all of a sudden takes off. Yeah, right at the bottom like that. Do you have the depth on that beacon? Sorry, what, say again? How deep is that beacon? Thousand uh, meters. Thousand, yeah. Copy, thanks. In terms of moving the ship, are we we're waiting for the package to be out of the water? Yeah. Just so I'm not bugging you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, I can tell I'm making. Is 30 their full speed or did they? Okay. Sorry, I keep leaning back and turning my mic on. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. I, I mean, I think they said 30, but I'll just double check with them what they're if they need if they're waiting on us to go fast. Winch control. Hey, Danny. Yes. Grab that monkey fist. Put it up on the porch. I just wanted to confirm that we don't have any um, speed restrictions anymore, so you can haul it in as fast as you're comfortable. Roger, we will uh, marginally increase it to 40 meters per minute. Thanks. Copy. Marginal. Marginal increase. Marginal increase. Activate. Should I just gently pick up the muddy shackles and maybe hook them on the back side of the uh, puck there? Just don't pick up the cutter. Want to slide me back a little, maybe? Ed's getting a little nervous. Thanks. That's gonna stay. Nope. Uh, at least the hose will be on the inside of the uh, suction sampling. So I'll go left, 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 left. It was flopped on the outside of the porch there. Not that hard left. This where they come out of the vehicle, right? Remember how we had it rigged? Here, yeah. hold on, let me come up. The hose is not yeah. cooperating. Go out away from the vehicle now. Yeah, and down. Down, down some more. A little left. So, Dirk, once we yeah. are... Okay, let him go there. Once we do have it back on... Um, is your intent to survey and prep the 70 meter PBOF? That way they're not dragging back around the side of the porch when we're dragging. That is correct. Yeah, we're not. Well, the moorings have both already been surveyed and yeah. sampled. So the next thing we're going to do is disconnect okay. those PBOFs from the up. second mooring, clear the one so that we can recover it later, and then uh, clear the second one from the, from the other mooring. So we'll have to do a few 12-way parking positions, two of them. Sure. That oh, way, when we uh, porch in and out, it's... Kind of better? Yeah, we'll just have to be careful porching out, because it'll... But you'll see the monkey fist now if you're dragging it in the mud. Yeah. It would be nice to avoid. But Ed, one of the good things about this porch cam is you can really see your situational awareness. Uh, the camera. Perhaps I uh, actually can't see it. No, I mean the manipulator operator can see that yeah. they're, you know, a couple feet away from the camera, not poking it in the eye. Until they have freeze fail. <laughs> Until they have freeze fail. How'd you guys do the slurps then? How'd you know, just use point the Zeus up and try and read it? Actually, the Zeus pointed up looks right at the bottle, really good. Yeah. Got my circular leash. How bad can it go? I gotta get you a belt pack. What are we on here? We've got no autos. No autos. Coming up. I thought for sure I'd be all on auto <laughs> when I came up. Nope. Okay. No stick forward. Yeah, I am floating a bit backwards. There you go. I like this navigation. Kind of fast. Yeah, it's not so bad, huh? There you go. Oh, I'm being tugged. Sorry, sorry. Yep, can't give you any more leash. That's right, I'm going to back up. 
I mean, I could. I am 35 meters off bottom. I could come down 5 meters. But why? It's going to give you an extra, what, foot? <laughs> Sorry, I'll just back up. So, question. Yes. Do we, um, so. how do you have to kit out Hercules for ONC expeditions compared to your other expeditions? Oh, that's a great question for the RV pilot. Yes. <laughs> well, there are a lot of specialized tools that we have to use for ONC. Uh, one of them being that wonderful thing we call the Fletcher. Right. Which is the little forks you got there in the front of the RV, and we use that to plug and unplug uh, dummy plugs onto these oily cables that you see us messing with. Um, that is like the most useful tool that we have had to add to the RV. Also, our bio box, which usually has uh, different sections for different creatures and different uh, things that we want to pick up off the bottom, we have opened up and turned into a toolbox. Right. So we could take beacons down and straps and sandbags and hooks and uh, all kinds of different tools. Uh, one of the big things that we use a lot of in this cruise is uh, our knives. Right, yeah. Usually they're on the vehicle as a safety precaution. Here they've been extremely useful for just regular ops. Oh, what do we have here? Ooh. Uh, weight, I'm guessing? Um, a thing. Right now, thing. we currently have a specialized piece of equipment on the vehicle that we oh, installed not. to cut the cable to the mooring. And that's oh, a big this cable cutter. Yeah, was this the hydraulic this cable cutter? Us. Yes. It's like a kettlebell. <laughs> <gasps> More cowbell? Kettlebell. Oh. More cowbell. More cowbell's that. better. Yeah. Um, the other day, we had a suction dredge installed on the vehicle to dig up one of those seismometers. Oh yeah, that's right. So there's a whole di different skill set and toolbox uh, on board the vehicle star? for an ONC cruise that's than it would be a typical star. science cruise where we use mainly Niskins, Chris cores, <laughs> and uh, our suction hammer. Is that a huge sea star? That's, Thanks. That's a Thanks, big Danny. Yeah. Uh, we've also lengthened the tether. We did lengthen the tether. Well, we put a longer tether on. Yes. 50 meters versus 30 meters. Yeah. Yeah, we used the tether stretcher for that operation. And we have uh, uh, a CTD on for ONC, so they can collect their own. Oh, there's a floaty guy. Yeah. Midwater holothurian. Yeah. Do you think that's a pin cushion star? Uh, I don't know. Like the other thing I've noticed that's different be between this cruise, ONC, and our typical operations is that we have to put a lot more thought into ballasting between right. every dive. Yeah. So we're constantly putting on uh, uh, different instruments and sensors on the vehicle to bring down to the sea floor. So we have to go in heavy and then you know, when we're either pick up weight on the bottom to keep our That's ballast nice down, um, or you know, if we're going in light, we have to put a put a bunch of different uh, weights on. So for this this dive specifically, we didn't have that many sensors or equipment to bring down, uh, so we had to strap some more weights onto the vehicle. So it's been changing, you know, depending on what the dive's specific goals are. So if I do auto heading, I can still change heading, right? It's just has, it's just a bit slower. Yeah, it's a bit slower, and it will like s lock when you. Oh, okay. So I think I want that on right now. Yeah. On account of I'm not that good at driving it. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't see into the control van, but uh, birthday boy here, Rennie. Birthday boy. Birthday, birthday boy. boy. He's. <laughs> what do you want for your birthday, Rennie? Do you want to fly an ROV? <laughs> <laughs> Step on up. Yeah. <laughs> so has it been a magical day, Rennie? Yeah, it's been great. <laughs> magical day. We haven't done, gone to the north. Let's go to the north. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've explored. We, well, I mean, we just got to wait here for this package, so. 
We have definitely explored the north. Have we? That's where we found that octopus. Oh, well, how about the east? East is pretty unexplored. <laughs> Let's go. We were hanging out with that octopus for, it was, it was like hanging out with us for a good 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah all of dinner time. Yeah, Look, there's an ROV eat. print. Sure is. Aww. Is that us? Of course. Could be anybody. And there's another <laughs> ROV print. Oh, there's another. It could be anybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know if it's an Alvin print, I mean, if it's got a big stack of weights sitting underneath it. Yeah. I don't know that Alvin actually ever touches down. Maybe they do. Yeah. I don't know. Do oh, when they sample? Object. Do they? Uh... I don't know. It's kind of like out into ob oblivion there. If only I knew somebody to ask. Yeah, Why am I not on board. tilting anymore? Uh, is that it's oh, a it's switch slow. on the joy box. No, it's going. Oh. It was just slow. Yeah, you slow gotta be careful because you might think you're tilting the camera, but you're actually putting the bio box in and out. Yeah, yeah, I got, I got uh, a. <laughs> what's his face with that? Dave. Tedarenko. Oh. <laughs> I do know about that gotcha. So. Yeah. All right. No, I mean, what do we even got down here, really? How's I think the camera I, not working? Okay, right. Let's go to the flat part. The just pulling it out. Well, I think we just made some sushi. I saw that. I was a little worried that I was doing something. <laughs> oh. A jelly. <laughs> so our hydrophone should be up ahead. There's your, uh... Got a little yep. sonar target. Perk was here. Guess who's back? You could it's like her. three 3D <laughs> print a little QR code on the bottom of Herc. Yeah. Every time we sit down... We and print the C floor. We thought about that. We leave an impression just going with Rennie's low hanging fruit joke. How uh how deep do you think the sediment is here? Do we have any like uh, uh we could do a full deep. push core, so Is this a little uh, crabby guy? What is I this? I think it's deeper than push core. Probably... No, I don't think so. It's no, kinda like crabby claws. Legs. Yeah, yeah. I mean Get up to it. We are 2,662 meters, so something deep. If you, well, if you slowly back up, I could zoom, but I don't want to zoom when we're this well, close to the hydrophone. Did you see the size of the uh, hole that we discovered? Yeah. yeah, I did. So that was easily six feet, at least two meters, if not three. Oh, any, oh, we should wow. go check out the hole. Where's that? It's Where's the hole? I think it's oh, east. Yeah, nav. Yeah, oh, we actually do have a nav at nav. Uh. Oh, I had auto out. Did I turn it back on? That's weird. Oh, we over there pushing buttons. Josh is down there wearing out the carpet in the lounge, pacing back and forth, <laughs> watching this. <laughs> Probably like, ah, Danny's driving. I know it. Uh, right there. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's the what? That's the hole you're talking about? <laughs> no. No. No, you'll, you'll see. You'll you're know just the drunk hole. with power over there. <laughs> you will know. I've never done that before. The stick. I've never done that before. I've always wanted to. You fulfilled a life dream, Jake. I did. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, let me give you a little more range. Beacon depth is 350 on. meters, so you only have to tolerate this for a little bit longer. There's the hole. <laughs> oh. Oh, there is the oh. hole, yeah. Is that from, like, a It's one of cork? the core cork things. One of the cork. Look like a but there's, no, um, but there's no cork in there's it. There's no cork in it. It's just... <laughs> uncorked. <laughs> it's an un uncorked. Uncorked cork. <laughs> is there an uncorking fee? No, no one. Well, we can't move the ship, so I can't get over. Oh, wait. It's not so far. How far? Yeah, you can get over there. Yeah. You can get over there, especially if I do this. Uncorked. <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> like listening to us. Dan comes back and the, the ROV's in the in a hole. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we made some choices. I can't say all of them were great. <laughs> I, it is a it is a herc size hole. It is a herc size hole. Whoa. It's like the abyss. The cork is quite impressive, I will say. The one with the cork in it. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's another one, yeah. If you uh, shoot lasers the down to the Danny center of the earth. Danny and I wanted to go check it oh, out, but cool. Dirk was not. You trying to say borehole? <laughs> yes. Got to careful with your auto outs around things like yeah, this, huh? Yeah. <laughs> what is down there? Something yeah, looks like a bath towel. Yeah, there's like a rag and yeah. yeah there was a there. Um, pom pom anemone. Oh, you got all the lights on, yeah. Yeah, those two hoods on the far end, they are two pom-pom anemones, -pom quite impressive to zoom cool. on. I, can, I can't give you It's okay, more. I'm coming back. I've seen enough of the hole. If you look down <laughs> south... As soon as I said the auto out thing, I got freaked out. If you turn south, you can see another hole. So yeah, why you, am I not turning? Do you want to tell us what they are? It could be the uh, fact that you are dragging it. Those are from the... Yeah, that might have been part of it. Those are the bar holes. And now Anna is dragging you. Which I think they are. Yeah, that's fine. They are for, uh, part of the ODP as as program, the ocean important. drilling program. I'm watching all the cameras. Just a, a number just of sensors, another uh, subsea floor, yep. measuring How's my altitude? Uh, parameters. Is this okay? Uh, yeah, chemistry yeah. and Two gas meters in the pocket. Do the and cable hanging off the front, but it's not that long. Actually, our RCO, Kate. Yeah, you Thank like, you. Yeah, you like it's been involved with this, this program for and many years before I joining You can stand underneath her right now. We have some corked ones where we have some sensors where we can actually download data from, the, from them. And yeah, careful backing up. Ones. You might run into a Maybe cork. Maybe Kate is, is listening yeah, to us. Yeah, no more backing up. She can give us... You do have a real view a camera now that uh, actually works. Ocean drilling program. Yeah. We can fix that once uh, Dan knocked over a CTD. Cuskill. Tina 4. So now you're flying, navigating, and logging. You should call on the ship and annotating this. He's also annotating. Right. So, unfortunately, we can't go see those pom pom anemones again um, just because of the. The talent of the pilot <laughs> <laughs> currently in the seat. <laughs> <laughs> because of the talent of the pilot yeah. currently in the seat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for saying it. <laughs> uh, but we are actually at 180 meters for the beacon, so I suspect that the hydrophone will be at the surface soon. Sweet. So we can resume our business. Are you gonna finish out this dive? Absolutely not. There's no way. How often do they let you do this, Rennie? I do it every once in a while. Yeah? Over the years, yeah. I think I feel like if Oh there's a grating under there hiding. Yeah. Oh yeah. I feel like if Rennie wanted to be a pilot he could definitely just be a pilot. I think if I trained a bit, sure. Let's put a U up ahead. An RD cable. I've seen lots of those this cruise. Oh. And a stack of dumbbells. Wait, sorry, what did you say it was? You have an oily cable. 
Oh yeah, no, be on that. This little, this, <laughs> this terrifying creature. A terrifying, terrifying. Cross training people in different positions is actually something uh, we've, we've been pushing for. Yeah. That's oh, this might be the sea star that used to hang, literally hang on the frame oh, of yeah. the oh. old hydrophone yeah. array. Well, he was, he lost was its recently, home. Uh, recently, uh, recently um, found homeless. Maybe. No, no. Uh, we're going to start a crowdfunding, uh, GoFundMe for yeah. the sea star. Can I have um, port, port cam instead of uh, no, and then this. Well, yeah. You want starboard there rail? There we go. What's that? You want starboard rail cam? Um, I just wanted port I and to see where the hydrophone is. I just want a port and starboard. That's all I wanted, really. That's all I want. I lost the plot. Where am I? Where's the hydrophone? What am I doing? It's right behind you. Oh, good. You're in that mess. Don't bump into it. It's behind me? How many wraps can I put in the tether? <laughs> Before giving it back to <laughs> Before <laughs> giving it back to Dan. Um, yeah, I, sometimes I'll occasionally collect, you know, use the arm, collect a sample, something like that. But my home's over there. I'm a mapper navigator. This is a Umbalula. It is definitely an Umbalula. I have sampled those. I have broken them off at the stem. Oh, it's Umbalula. It's funny how, <laughs> I don't know, my pronunciation of those species. Maybe there has some Portuguese. Uh, how, do you, how do you spell it, Fabio? Um, U M B E. L U L A. But there might be a couple of L's. We have on our marine guide. Okay. I have the old one. Where is that hydrophone? Should be coming up. I feel like you're drawing a Pac Man. If you look at the. Uh <laughs> Don't read into it, otherwise you'll find something else about me that I don't want to know. <laughs> Some Rorschach thing of the snail trails I'm drawing. <laughs> Seriously, you got like a beak, you got an eye. Oh, well, I know, a chomp from, uh, from Where, Mario. Where's that yeah. a Balula? Where'd it go? I mean, Broken over underneath us? No, we're too high up. There it is. There it is. Okay, so you're going to want to head north. Jake, you were there a when I... A little bit, and then you're going to want to head south. What? Jake, you were there when I sampled that sponge in that crazy sponge field, right? Yeah, that was not. It was in a dead sponge field? And then it, like, it was like, oh, this should be an easy one. And I was like, <laughs> it was the, the craziest... Like nothingness that yeah, I was trying just to crumbled. do. It was insane. <laughs> that was crazy. Yeah. Thank you. Now I'm seeing dinosaurs. Doing a little pirouette. Let's go this. Oh, wait, auto heading. I want that back on. The color scheme is very interesting on the nav screen. Which one? That one? Yeah. Some choices were made. The artwork is uh, exquisite. Uh, beacons at the surface. And drifting towards. That's a pretty big pile. I can. Uh, so this is like significant current. I can mm -hmm. share we on the I mean, I'm, drive. I, I was like drifting towards the. Yeah, yeah. I was fighting it all earlier. Yeah. Trying to look at that. Uh, like full lat. Yeah, Hercules doesn't lateral well. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Ed, hydrophone at surface, but it's not on deck, right? Not on deck. Roger. Uh, the beacon is at the surface. Beacon's at the surface, yeah. Roger. That's like 20 meters Beacon's up. out of the water. Jake, you can Mon Senator, Mon Center? Mon, Mon Senator. Mon Senator. Mon Center so, uh, Sonardyne and turn off the RS, ONC RS beacon. Sonar, Sonardyne. Sonardyne, yeah. 
Uh, Turn so, off the yeah. RS there you go. beacon. My first navigator move. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> we only call in ship moves <laughs> <laughs> sooner than we can train you. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with it, guys. Well, K2 will train me. That's right. So yeah, he's good too. So <laughs> can you uh, go to vehicle and change that to elevator one? Yeah. And then turn off visible. There we go. Much oh, better. It's clean. It's clean. The blood is gone. Hercules. So, yeah, it's on solution dead rec, which is the DVL. It's kind of like you want something in between auto heading and not. Like it's like too slow or too... Isn't there a sensitivity setting for that? Yeah, I think there is. Yeah, there's uh, s speed and uh, all the PID gains, or max max speed. Oh, time for gauges, or at least my, my gauges. Uh, 409. All right, uh, someone's just asking about uh, the expedition with Ocean Networks Canada and all of the stuff that we put on the deck of the boat. Oh my goodness. Doing, uh, <laughs> Roger. So yes, it is basically a full day of mobilization. Uh, luckily, our Marine Technology Center is across the street from the Institute of Ocean Sciences where, we, um, where the Nautilus uh, comes into port and we rent a flatbed truck apparently from a wonderful person named Spencer and he drives drives all the equipment over it gets craned onto the deck of the boat and things are are moved around and jigsawed in and then there is a full day of demobilization in this case that's going to be Tuesday July 18th and um, yeah so One of the things that we do have to do is when we come into port, we, we will uh, bring a pilot on board um, to, to, walk, to help us through the waterways. So I think we'll, we'll meet this, this pilot will come out from, uh, I think, Bamfield last time on, the, on one of the pilot boats, hops on board and will help, I don't know what you say, drive the boat through the the path <laughs> the they, um, they actually give us information on how to handle the local currents, etc., and direction. They don't yeah. Physically. But they're. Uh, um, I think they're coming on board very early, like 3 a.m. or something. Oh boy. 2 a.m. Which is too bad because going into the Strait of Juan de Puca and up Strait of Georgia into crazy looking co uh, Copa Pot or something. Santa See that? Inlet is gorgeous. Looks like package is at the surface. Something's at the surface. Oh, yeah. Are there floats on this? Huh? No. no. Just no, it's puck, gone, right? There are weights. Tina four. All right, and one thing before we uh, move into other talk here, just wanted to bring up the fact of the marine snow that we're seeing. Um, so this is uh, organic matter, Do maybe some plankton. Yeah. 
Jake yeah. Kidding, isn't it? <laughs> and uh, yeah, creates um, nutrient cycle for organisms on the seafloor. Uh, it's a really important part of the ecosystem. Thank you. Yeah, of course. And um, since we were talking about heading home, I just want to say hello to Sandra Peltz. Shrimp. Shrimp? Where? Gone. Mid midwater shrimp? Yeah. yeah. So, some of these hollow thurians are looking a little dusty. That's what I was just looking at. It was like that cucumber did not look very healthy. No. Is that probably us? I, yeah, you know, could be. Otherwise, it's just like your food is accumulating on you, bud. What we got here? What is it's Midwater holothurian again. Swimming. I can't think cough. Although uh, this looks like... Oh, yeah, it's shadowed. Yeah. Palopatidus, they can Look, swim. Some tracks. Go for a swim to find a better spot. Super slow. Is that a jelly or a holothurian? The question remains. <laughs> it looks like a, a banged up jelly, but... I'd go with jelly. I'm going to hedge my bets on Holothurian. Maybe I'll uh, go. I'm going with jelly. Uh, <sighs> Rennie, can you pilot us to the answer? Sure. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. I just don't want to dust it or anything. Yeah, that's a jelly. Can you get a, a no quick, quick no zoom? No way. Um, two, yeah, you got back up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Or just let it uh, come I in. I think it's yeah. a Holothurian. That's a Holothurian. Oh, oh, it's a jelly. It's a jelly. Oh, it's a torn jelly. Torn it's jelly. Torn jelly. Oh. Just oh, doesn't so know which right. way to go. He's torn. Yeah. He, sorry, they. I called it dust a bit. Really working on that. Thank you. Still worth the zone. Trying to give you a little bit of your porch and get that housing out of there. That was pretty exciting, everyone. <laughs> so exciting. <laughs> What's up, Ed? Pilot cam. Did Dan move your camera? I think we're. Ooh. I don't know. I kind of like it over here. Why not? <laughs> Sugar. <laughs> I'll just, I'll keep, event. I'll keep the... Thank you! We're getting treats from Dan. That's awesome, great. Thank you, Dan. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. some cable management first. We like to do the uh what do you call it? Is it politically correct to call it a Chinese fire drill? No. No. Definitely not. <laughs> Uh, weights are on deck. You want to change positions in the chairs? Is that what you're saying? Well, that's what we always do. All right. I guess we can just call it musical chairs. I think it's pretty safe to assume these days if it has a nationality in it, then it's probably a era of a bygone time. 
or a, uh, a uh, artifact of a bygone time. Could be wrong. Okay. There's a the cable. We are tantalizingly close to being able to move the ship as soon as I get it on. Tantalizing. Tantalizing. That's one of my favorite words. Next time in Hawaii, you should go on a road, a uh, mountain called Tantalus. Hmm. Oh, yeah, nice Ooh. hike. I remember that one. Tantalus. There's a winery in Kona Oahu? called Tantalus. Yeah. At the top of it, there is uh, there's a really good hike, but also there's a viewpoint that overlooks all of uh, Honolulu. You guys go uh -huh. on your hike. I'm more into Lauren's style of traveling and heading right to the winery. <laughs> um, well, there are lots of um, different like distilleries and stuff in Ho on Oahu as well. Got microbrews, distilleries. Kind of fun stuff. These M&Ms are fantastic. Agreed. Hit this spot. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Dan. The fun size. And he checked, there's no brown ones. Well, you guys probably don't even know what that means. Never mind. David Lee Roth. Oh, there you go. Ryder. But they now have a backstory on it, and I'm not sure I believe I it. don't know if I buy that. Yeah. They, it, it makes it seem they like... They would have like, said it at the time. Yeah, they seem like... Uh, I think they made it up. Like, it makes them seem saint-like. No, it makes instead them seem of smart. being a pain... So we, are we looking for that cable, or are we waiting for... We're there? waiting for the package to come on board. Yeah, once, oh. the, pa once the package is on board, we will um, be able okay. to move Clear. the ship. You're just going to attack... Uh, and where's our now. goal to move to? Uh, it's... W I'm not sure which they want to go to first. I think that I think it's the oily from the IP to both of the straws. Okay. Um, West. Southwest. West, southwest, yeah. Originally going through the straw blue, Murray. It's only one left. Yeah. It's only yellow left. I'm getting the feeling that uh, the uh, straw. Uh, didn't anticipate having so many devices down because they're naming convention. Like so there's so blue, many. yellow, A, B, one, <laughs> two. I mean, it's. Well, it's just one string or two strings. Easy to find. There's no. We're gonna have a cubic kilometer of those, so it would be a bit more complicated. I was, on. yeah, I was actually thinking about, was reading up on the experiment and um, took a look at what the plan is after these, these kind of prototype test phases. And it's, I was trying to think about how it will get placed, like, Watching the operations, bringing them up, or <laughs> it's quite uh, quite an involved process just to bring one one mooring up. It's basically a whole yeah day. Our RCM mooring was what how tall? About 500 meters. Yep. About that. So that will be twice as long. That one was like six hour operation. Yeah. Or something. 